What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken and today we're going to be doing the links on this rig here. Uh, it's actually just an excerpt from our larger full build video of this guy. And you can check out that full build video over here. Um, so once you've already watched this video, you can just skip the links portion on the uh, full build video. Just use the chapters below to, to do that. We are going to be installing the Enjora links and just uh, talking about them a little bit. So let's get started. And we're on to our links. I really like these Enjora links with the rod ends. They're a little bit cheaper than the one piece links. And one of the things we've used these for is uh, when we have like a hybrid build where we're using SCX and FCX or TRX and FCX, whatever, different axles and we need different hardware or pivot, pivot uh, balls, we can use different rod ends on these links or use these rod ends on custom length links. And I have a video about that. We'll put that right over here. You can check that out where we're basically taking and making custom link rod ends. But we use these Enjora rod ends because um, at least the times we've ordered it, they come with 18 uh, rod ends. And generally, when you buy the individual rod ends, they're like a dollar a piece. And so for the price, you essentially are getting uh, 18 instead of 16 rod ends for the, well, the same price. You basically get them for like 90 cents a piece or 95 cents or something like that. They're just slightly cheaper. Um, and they come with all the hardware and everything you need. So we like that for, so basically for the same price as just the rod ends, like on Amazon, you can get the rod ends and the screws and the actual links and then um, just use the rod ends for custom stuff or use the links and just have extra parts. And it's basically the same price. So the best way to kind of do this is you can either just press down on them and that'll push the ball in, or you can use some needle nose pliers and just kind of gently push them in and just make sure you don't mar up the plastic rod end or the ball joints. And you want to make sure these things move nice and smooth. A cool little thing that they also include in these links is this little nut of sorts. It's essentially a double threaded inner piece, I guess. It's like a little brass piece where the inside's threaded and you are able to screw in uh, for four link. That way, if your servo tray doesn't have threaded ears where you want to thread in your four link, this will let you put it between that where your normal white link goes and then you can screw into this. That way, not just the ears are holding it. So like on, uh, on a tray like this, if we're not threaded here, which we're not, we're not threaded on this side, only on this side, it's meant for a single screw to go through and hold your Y-link. This will go in between there and you can screw into that and you can do your four link. Pretty sweet that Enjora includes that. So again, another reason we like to buy these uh, kits like this. It's just a good value. And one last little point, uh, they're semi-adjustable, right? Like if you needed to have just a little bit extra length, you could unthread them You'll have a space in there, which you could use like an, uh, not an O-ring necessarily, but like a plastic spacer or even a metal spacer if you can find something the same diameter. And that'll give you the ability to adjust your length just a little bit. And you're not going to want to do too much because there's only so much threading and you don't want to weaken this. But if you do, a, you know, maybe a little less than that, but you do a little bit like that and a little bit like that on this side, you're actually going to get a few millimeters of extra length. So if you need to adjust or you want to adjust like your clocking on your axle, you can do it with these kind of links. The one piece links are set one piece, right? There's no adjusting it. So you can kind of do something along those lines and uh, you just get a, you know another millimeter, two millimeters, maybe even three out of that. And again, like I said, the only problem is you have a space, but you could always fill that gap with some antenna tube, right? So like uh, the tubing that you use on an RC antenna, you can buy that stuff super cheap. And we've actually made our custom links using threaded rod and antenna tube. Uh, we also showed that in that video. Again, for the new guys out there, I just wanted to point it out on these link ends, there's one side that's slightly chamfered and another side, generally, there's one side that's slightly chamfered or more open and one side a little bit more closed. This is the side you want to put your pivot bolt in. If you try to come in through the other side, you're going to have a heck of a time and uh, it's probably not going to go in very well. So just be aware that the side does matter. something I wanted to show you about these plastic link ends. Um, sometimes it can be kind of tight, right? So when you put a link together, you can see it doesn't really want to drop easily. This one's not too bad, actually. Let's try this side. And it just depends on manufacturing tolerances and stuff. Actually, this one's not too bad either. This one is a little tight. Unfortunately, we don't have a link end, a link in there yet, but you can see it kind of, kind of 
grabs or is sticking, you know, there's a little bit of binding there. A way to fix this, and you've got to be careful doing this, but we do it on the mini Z's all the time, is you can grab some needle nose pliers or any pliers really, and you want to just kind of pinch right, right here. You don't want to do it too hard, but you just kind of squeeze them together. And what it's doing is it's slightly deforming the plastic. Oh, look at that. That's a huge difference. Actually, you can almost see it. Look at that. I'm just barely touching it and it moves a ton now. Okay. Look at this side. Let's see this side. It won't move. You can even hear me doing it. Right. It seems fine like this, but it does bind a little bit. Okay. So if we take this and we just squeeze it, make sure you're centered, make sure you're not squeezing so hard that it slips and it breaks the plastic or mars it up, but just evenly kind of squeeze it. Sometimes you got to go hard. It depends on the kind of plastic it's made out of and make sure your ball doesn't shoot out. You don't want to squeeze it so hard. It kind of shoots out. And now look way more loose. Okay. So that's what you want. All right. So we got all of our links built. Um, this one only came with one extra link in, which is fine, but we got an extra ball end. Either way, the extra stuff is always nice. So, uh, yeah, Enjora always seems to throw in a little bit of extra hardware here and there, which is fantastic. More manufacturers should take notice. If you don't throw in an extra screw, an extra link end, an extra ball joint, just little extra pieces, just one even, um, O-ring, stuff like that, then you're doing it wrong because... You're also give, saving yourself customer service headaches because what if your manufacturing process has a broken one or a missing one, you know, or even user error, they break one, you know, at least they've got extras, at least of the small hardware. I wouldn't expect extra links or anything crazy like that, but link ends, ball joints, screws, you know, O-rings, washers, a little, little hardware stuff. Definitely, definitely include extras. So we're going to go ahead and get this stuff installed on here and we'll be back. One more thing, make sure you kind of clean up any sort of flashing that might be on your uh, link ends. This one had a little bit. You just want to kind of clean that off if it happens to be there. You know, no manufacturing is perfect. You just want to make sure that when you put your link into wherever it's being held, right, that you're not, the flashing is not catching and causing binding. You want things to be as loose as possible. Not so loose that it's like flopping around and there's a ton of play, but I mean, loose as in no binding, nothing's catching, nothing's stopping it from moving freely. We went through and we pinched all of our link ends so that all of our pivot balls are super, super smooth. That's going to help a ton with articulation. A few moments later. All right, guys. So we got all of our links in. Just want to show you how floppy they are. Look at that. It's like a squid, right? Nothing's binding. Um, that's what you want your links to look like. Nice and floppy. Okay. Oh wait, is this one stuck? Oh no, we're good. All right. So we're going to go ahead and work on getting our axles attached. And then we've also got our brass uh, diff cover here. We're just putting one on the front. We're not going to do one on the back. We're trying to get that front weight bias a little bit. We've got an OGRC uh, servo tray here. Uh, this is just one of the basics. It's not an adjustable. And then on the back, we're going to run this guy, the OGRC link riser. And it's wide, so it sets your uh, links a little bit wider, which will help with your side hilling. It gives you more stability on the sides. So we're going to try this guy out. And we're going to go ahead and just mount these guys in the bottom middle row on the rear truss. And then we can always adjust it later, right? Um, this uh, link set being adjustable will allow us to, you know, clock our axle forward and backwards a little bit uh, by moving it you know, forward and backwards on the holes. And then also you can get anti-squat, uh, more anti-squat by scooting the link higher. The lower your link, the more squat you'll get, the higher the link, the less squat you'll get. Looks like we're kind of bottoming out right now on our motor. So that's unfortunate. Our link is hitting our motor. So we might have to do something about that. Um, not quite sure yet. And looking at this already, I can tell we need to move our our link back a little bit more on the truss to get our axle to cant outward or clock outward just a little bit. Uh, you can see our drive shaft is kind of pointing down compared to, you know, our lower drive shaft compared to the upper drive shaft. So we want to rotate the axle basically from the counterclockwise just a little bit from this view. So we'll go ahead and do that because we can tell it already needs it. So we'll move these guys forward. Now you can see our drive shaft sits a little bit better, 
right? Because it pushed our axle counterclockwise. So that's good. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of this right here. That sucks. We'll have to try to figure out. Maybe we can grind down on our motor case a little bit or grind down on this link just a little bit, just to get a little bit more even. You can see we have tons of articulation this way, but that's kind of our max on this side. So that's what we get for running a rear facing motor and a long one at that. There's also the option of making like a custom link or using a high clearance link on the inside that kind of is bent the other way. Not that that's ideal, but you know, if it works, it works. So there's a lot of different options we can do here. Let's go ahead and move on. We'll get our front on and we will be back. More moments later. She's a beaut. This is awesome. Nice and floppy. That's exactly how you want your links. No binding at all, but also look at that. Very little play. That's me trying to go side to side, right? You just have just this tiniest bit of side to side play. The back is a little bit more because, well, they're longer links. But yeah, you want to minimize that play as much as possible while maintaining a good amount of uh, freedom. Yeah. So anyway, looking good, looking good. We had to take a little bit of material out of the back of our servo because this tray isn't quite long enough. So, and we don't, this is not an expensive servo. So we just dremeled out, you probably can't see it very much, just dremeled out a little bit so that the uh, links don't hit. That's our servo tray. Um, Cause the servo tray is meant for a, the shorter stock length servos. And this uh, 827 is just a little bit longer, you can see. So, but before we, we cleared that back of that servo out a little bit, uh, we were kind of having a little binding and we were not dropping free. So again, just always kind of check while you're building. And here we are. Now I wanted to show one little thing that we didn't show in the build video. So this is new footage. Um, adjusting the links, right? So we talked about adjusting the length of the links. You know, it's kind of hard to see. I know, sorry. But you can see here we've got maybe a millimeter and here maybe a millimeter on our upper link. And I just want to show you how much of a, look at that. Do you see how it's pushed the whole axle over? That's because we haven't done the other side yet. So it'll be straight once we do the other side, but that just shows what a little tiny bit of adjustment does. I don't know if, I mean, you should be able to see that. Look, look at the difference and how far it's sitting from the chassis. That means it's moved back and canted just a little bit more clocked, really, just a little bit more clockwise here. So that kind of shows you though, you might be able to really see it here. Look at that. It just shows you what a millimeter or two millimeters of adjustment can do on these little guys. So we're going to do our top here as well and get that extra two millimeters, maybe, maybe a millimeter and a half. That'll get our ax axle straightened back out and give us the little bit of clocking that we want. We were kind of facing too inward and uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of extend that upper link just a little bit. So let's get that done. There you go. Now you can see it's uh, all lined up. We've got just a little bit of spacing. And if you really want to get precise with it, you would pull the links all the way off and then measure them, right? Just to make sure you're the exact same on both sides. We didn't even pull our tires off here, but let's see. Looks like we're at 52 and a half, center to center. Yeah, we should be right at the same 50, yep, 52 and a half. Bam. But on our upper links, we're not too worried about the shims or spacers because there's nothing, they're not rubbing on anything. But that did give us just a little bit extra clocking to the rear, which kind of flattened out here a little bit, which is good. And also raised our drive shaft just a bit. It's kind of hard to see in there, but it was pointing down a little more than I'd like. And while we were in here, we figured, well, let's go ahead and actually extend our front just a little bit. Um, and I wanted to show this is what I was talking about, the antenna tube. That's what we use to kind of cover any kind of threaded links if we do custom links. And then also, you can see here, we've got our little bit of uh, extension there. Okay. 
So we went ahead and extended it on this angled portion. That'll help push our front end a little bit more on the high clearance side. Also, it's less likely to get hit uh, by rock. So we wanted to kind of keep this connection here as smooth as possible. So we put a little bit there and then a little bit on the uh, upper links. Uh, not quite as much as the bottom because we wanted to clock our axle backward just a little bit so that we had a little bit of caster in our steering. Um, so yeah, so this little bit here is like an extra almost two millimeters, 1.7. And then this little guy is like one and a half. So basically a quarter of a millimeter difference between our upper and lower just to get a little bit of a tilt. That's one of the cool things about these kind of links. Totally, totally tunable. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. Why don't you put down in the comments below, tunable links tunable links. Put that in the comments below and uh, yeah, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you know when all the videos go up. And if you didn't check out the full build video, make sure you do that. Um, again, you can skip the links section using the chapters. All right, guys, get out there, build something awesome, smash them, crash them, and bash them, but don't break the expensive parts. Mm -hmm.